Jesus said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. Did you tell some? Yeah, okay. All right, well, good, good, good. Uh, that's a part of following Jesus. If we're following Jesus, he's going to make us into fishers of men. Uh, how about reading your Bible through? How are we doing there? Did you read your Bible every day this week? Yes, yes, yes. Good, good. All right. And if you were reading our published uh, uh, text, you would have been in Song of Solomon and Isaiah in the Old Testament and First and Second Corinthians in the New. So uh, the first trivia question, uh, the imagery in the Song of Solomon foreshadows what New Testament reality? Now, you know the Song of Solomon is, is about, uh, it's a love story. The oh. covenant between God and the bride. It's, it's, it's a foreshadowing of the New Testament covenant or the relationship of Jesus and his bride. Okay, so if you read the Song of Solomon with that as your context, it, it really, really speaks to us. Then uh, also in the Old Testament, in the sixth chapter of his book, what did Isaiah see? Well, let me go down here and read that to you. Uh, starts off with, it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. And then it goes on to, to say what they, they were flying around the throne uh, uh, singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. He said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. Yeah, I do too. Oh, come, come on back here. Uh, and then in the back to the New Testament with our trivia question there. 1 Corinthians 13 is known as the what chapter? <coughs> love. Mm -hmm. Love, love, love. Uh, so 1 Corinthians a while and absorb it and, and difficulties here uh, with our Wi-Fi connection. So uh, it's coming and going. Oh, I hate that. Uh, folks, as you're watching online, uh, by the way, if you're watching, uh, say, uh, say something, say hello, good morning, uh, check in, let other folks know you're watching. Okay, so that's enough of that. It, it is trying to reconnect. Okay, that's okay. All right, so we had to disable the Wi-Fi. Uh, because it kept uh, coming and going. So, all right, here we are. Uh, we are in Galatians chapter 5. I, I got to looking last night thinking, how long have we been in Galatians? Our first lesson was May the 12th. So we've been hanging out in Galatians all summer long uh, and now into the fall, and we probably have another three or four lessons to go. Uh, but then when we finish Galatians, it's going to be time for thinking toward Thanksgiving. For, we're going to have a couple of lessons on gratitude, and then we'll uh, launch into our Advent series, uh, getting our hearts prepared for the coming of Jesus at Christmas time. Uh, so that's a preview of coming attractions. And so now we'll turn our attention back to what the Holy Spirit is saying to us through Holy Scripture. Uh, we're in Galatians uh, 5, so somebody read for us 16 through 18. So I say walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desire of the flesh. <clears throat> for the flesh desire what is 
contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that we so that you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law okay and then somebody read uh, 19 <coughs> through 21 19 20 and 21 so the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, like I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. There's a war going on. <coughs> There's a war going on every day, and we are in it. I'm not talking about the war in Israel. I'm not talking about the war in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about the war anywhere else other than in our mind and our heart. Yep. There's a war going on every day. Uh, some people have surrendered and given up the fight. Others, we, we fight every day. It is. It's a, it's a battle that we fight every day. Day. And you'll remember we've been studying here in Galatians uh, that uh, verse in chapter 2, verse 20, where it says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not me, but it is Christ who lives in me. And there is that battle going on every day about who's going to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Is it going to be me, or am I going to let Christ be in charge today? Uh, and that battle that goes on is described here in verse 16. Uh, uh, this first phrase in 16 uh, tells you uh, uh, where we're going. So I say, this is Paul writing under, actually the Holy Spirit through Paul is writing this. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. And then we see uh, a little later what happens if you don't. And then we see what happens if you do. Okay. And that's the outline of where we're going, and we'll see how far we get today. Uh, uh, verse 17 says that it is our body that wants to do wrong. There is this thing within our body called the carnal nature mm -hmm. that wants to do wrong rather than right. And it's going to be with us all of our lives. As long as we have this flesh, this body, we're going to have that struggle. Sorry if that's bad news, uh, but it's the truth, and we need to hear the truth. Uh, so laying down this body is not a terrible thing. When people, Christians, die, uh, uh, the Bible says beautiful in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Solomon said, better is our day of death than our day of birth. So for those of us who know Christ, stepping out of this mortal flesh is a glorious moment because we're laying aside that war. We're being freed from that battle. We'll never have to fight that battle again of do I do wrong or do I do right? 
Do I do what I want to do or do I what, do what Christ wants me to do? So that's, that's the struggle that we face every day. Uh, verse 17, the sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants for us. So the, the Spirit wants us to do right, but then that's the opposite of what our sinful body wants to do. So that is uh, the opposing forces within us uh, are the, the nature of the carnal nature that wants to do evil and the Spirit of God that wants us, that puts desires in us that make us want to do what's right. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So we, what he says here is we are not free to do good all the time. We're not because our evil carnal nature is fighting that all the time. How many times have you ever thought, well, I intended to do this good thing, but this got in the way. Okay, I intended to do this. I wanted to do this, but mm. it's harder to be a Christian now than it ever has been. I, I think you may be right. It's harder to be a Christian yeah, now so than it ever it has been. been. You know, uh, it looks like you know. It feels like evil is right in our face all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, verse nineteen. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, what desires? What are those like? What, how do they manifest themselves? Well, there's a very vivid description here uh, that, that lays out, okay, if, if we're going to go with the flow, all right, if you get in the river and you go with the flow, uh, you know where it leads, okay? Ultimately, you're going to wind up in the ocean. Uh, you're going to get in the water, stay in the water, you're going to wind up in more water, uh, bigger water, more treacherous water. Uh, down at the ocean is where the sharks live, Okay. Uh, so it's much more dangerous than the catfish in the river. Hmm. Hmm. All right? Hmm. Yep. So if you follow the desires of your sinful nature, if you take a break from fighting the battle and you say, I'm tired of this, I'm just going to do what I want to do. How many of you know some folks that have done that. I, how many of us have done it ourselves? I've done it myself. I've yeah. Done it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, tired of fighting. Uh, I'm just going to give in. Mm -hmm. So when we do, then this, the results, uh, the Holy Spirit says here, when we give in to our sinful desires, our sinful nature, the results are very clear. And then he lists these things that are the result of our giving in. The first one is sexual immorality. Uh, that, uh, what all does that include? Sexual immorality. Having sex outside of marriage. Or adultery. Sex outside of marriage, adultery. Same-sex same sex. Same sex marriage or same-sex sex. sex. Uh, okay. What about impurity? Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Uncleanness or... Okay. Yeah, put uh, I'd, I'd put that one with lust. Yep. Uh, I can't pronounce that. But... Pardon? I can't pronounce that. But... Lasciviousness? Yeah. yeah. Uh, all of those words just mean 
uh, sexual immorality, which includes uh, pornography, uh, lust, uh, lustful pleasures, anything having to do with sex that is not honoring God, okay? And then uh, verse 20, idolatry. Well, you, you, you might think, I'm not worshiping any golden calf, so I'm not guilty of idolatry. Yeah, whatever you put more than God, that's what that's about. Oh, oh, anything that you give priority over God can be an idol. Mm. Children can be an idol to us. Watching football instead of going to church, yeah. Uh, anything that gets in the way of you serving God. Any other, any other ideas on what might be an idol in a person's life? Another person can be... A relationship. That cell phone. Cell phone. <laughs> How many of us know that addiction to our cell phones is a real thing? Mm -hmm. Video games. Video games. Uh, that you stay up too late playing video games to get up and go to work or get up and go to church. Uh, that can be an that. idol. Huh? I play Monopoly Go. I'm guilty of that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, so, idolatry is not necessarily worshiping a golden calf or worshiping ancestors or worshiping uh, uh, some idol somewhere. Uh, but it is anything that finds priority over the things of God. Sorcery. What is sorcery? No, witchcraft, like all. Um, okay, witchcraft. Witch, uh, storytelling or. Um, psychics. And psychics, tarot cards, mm -hmm. horoscopes. Yep, Ouija boards. Ouija boards. <laughs> Ancestry worship or worship of nature. Yeah. Sorcery, uh, yeah. Uh, sorcery is also uh, the root word is pharmakeia. What does that sound like? Pharmakeia. <laughs> Pharmacy, okay. Drugs. Drugs, uh, there are people that advocate the use of drugs to have a higher spirituality experience. Huh? Like peyote. Yeah. Like what, uh, peyote, yeah. The Indians. Yeah, the Indians. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you're supposed to reach the spirit by using it or something. Yeah. That's about, what else about it? <laughs> but, but sorcery uh, and the things of dark magic and uh, drugs can lead to spiritual oppression or spiritual possession. You do know that demons possess people. They always have and they always will. Now, here's, here's a moment that you need to be aware of that as Christians, we cannot be demon-possessed because the Spirit of God lives in us, okay? And, yeah, and the two cannot coexist, all right? Uh, so sorcery leads people down a dark, dark rabbit hole, and, and, uh, and it, it leads... It leads to a, a very dark place, but that's where, that's where our, our sinful nature wants to take us because 
we're curious. We want to find out about things. Uh, uh, and that natural curiosity is corrupted by the enemy to make us want to pursue curiosity in an evil context rather than curiosity in a holy context. I'm curious about the things of God. I want to learn more about the things of God. Uh, but that curiosity, by the way, every good and natural impulse has been corrupted by the enemy. Okay? Uh, sex, for instance, is a picture of Christ and his church in complete union between a husband and a wife. It's a beautiful picture. But the enemy has corrupted it and, and made it something uh, uh, that can be very sordid and dark and ugly. Uh, child exploitation. It's estimated that there may be as, million, as many as a million children that are in uh, slavery, in sex trafficking, children. Uh, the drug traffickers have learned that they can get their cocaine and sell it or their meth and sell it, but they can only sell it one time. But if they've got a child, they can sell that child five or six times a day. Mm. Uh, wow, that's sad, man. It's very sad, very sad. Uh, and that's where, that's where dark, uh, uh, living in the dark and letting our, uh, our, our carnal nature have its way, that's what it leads to. Ravi Zacharias' daughter, is in, in the uh, ministry of rescuing children from the sex trade. And she was asked one time, what's the youngest child you have saved out of sex trafficking? And she said it was a little girl who was six months old. Uh -uh. Six months old. Uh, now that just tells you how awful uh, that world can be. Hostility. Anger. Hostility toward other people. Uh, we see hostility being exercised by Russia over Ukraine. We see hostility over the Islamic uh, countries against the nation Israel. We see hostilities all over the world that are taking place. That's the result of following our carnal nature. Uh, Quarreling. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Having start. arguments. Start. <laughs> We're getting close to home. Wait, mm -hmm. you, get that, you get that back up. Okay, you having arguments. People quarreling over the Bible. Okay, people fighting over, yeah, over the Bible. Uh, it yeah, happened. Right. Quarreling, fighting, yeah. arguments. Uh, what if when you hear something that you disagree with regardless of who it comes from uh, other than our children what if you just said oh really <laughs> rather than let me tell you what the truth is about that you know Oh, really? Or, huh? Oh, I didn't know. Huh? <laughs> uh, I didn't know that, yeah. Or how about this? Uh, you're, you're, you're accused of doing something or something goes wrong. Uh, mm. I, it's my fault. I'm sorry, it's my fault. <laughs> we don't have to be right. That's a part of the carnal nature inside of us that wants to justify our behavior. We want to be right. How, what if we just let it go? What if we just let it go? Uh, rather than expressing hostility in an argument. 
What about jealousy? You ever find yourself wishing you had what somebody else has? Yes, mute. Talent? <laughs> I wish I could sing. I do. Well, you're going to have to You know? Uh, jealousy. That green-eyed monster rears its head in the church uh, over position, over uh, privilege in the church, over uh, advancement in the church or favor expressed mm -hmm. to different people in the church. Uh, outbursts of anger. We got an anger management class that's getting ready to start on Monday nights. Sign me up. Okay. <laughs> anger. Anger. Outbursts of anger. Um, I'm gonna try to try to try to get through these uh, uh, before we run out of time. How about selfish <laughs> ambition? We want to. We want to push ourselves forward uh, and step on people on the way up the ladder. That happens. Uh, putting somebody else down to improve our position, we think. Uh, dissension. Dissension in the church. Dissension in the church. People talking about what's wrong about what the preachers doing what's wrong about what the staff's doing what's wrong about what this member over here did what this member over here did what that committee did dissension in the church uh, we need to be careful because the bible says that there are four things that the lord hates and the last one in that list is he that sows dissension among the brothers, a uh, brethren. So be careful. Don't be talking ugly about folks in the church. Don't be talking ugly about your 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 brothers and sisters. Um, and and be careful how you you do that. Uh, which division is the next one? Uh, we got. Uh, this group over here that wants this done. We got this group over here that wants this done, and and they're 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 diametrically opposed, and there's ugliness going on toward each other. Uh, division, envy, envy, a lot like jealousy. Envy. You wish you could be the one out front. You wish you could get the recognition. You envy the recognition that others are getting. Oh, these last two. Uh, oh, this would never happen to church members, to born-again believers. Drunkenness and attending wild parties. Uh, yeah, it does happen. When we get to the place where we're tired of fighting the battle and we decide we're going to coast, uh, by the way, there are no vacations from the battle. Mm. <laughs> no vacations from the battle. It's every day. Because if we decide we're, going to, we're, we're just going to relax for a while and we're not going to, we're not going to pay attention to those things, uh, drunkenness and wild parties are not far away. Well, uh, so how do we battle that? What are the things that we do that keep us aware of our uh, uh, imperfections, of our own desires to want to do the wrong thing and make us aware enough that we can fight the, the good fight? Renew our mind daily and read our word. Or... Renew our mind daily, read the word. Pray. Pray, 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 pray. pray. Every day, it's a battle. Uh, don't you think you need to talk to your commanding officer every morning about the plan, hmm. the battle plan for the day? Be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
to start your day talking to your commanding officer about today's battle plan. All right? Surround yourself with other Christians. Surround yourself with other Christians. Hang out with, with, with uh, uh, folks that are uh, uh, warriors who are also fighting the good fight. Okay? What else? Let me, let me tell you another simple one, and that is service. Serving in some capacity or another. We're, when we're giving, we're, we're never uh, as much like Christ as when we're giving. That's why he said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And we're less tempted to fall when we're serving other people. So, all right. So we... we, we immerse ourselves in, in the Word. We read the Word every day. Uh, we pray every morning. We have a, a consult with our commanding officer, God himself, uh, about the battle plan for the day. And then uh, we surround ourselves with like-minded warrior people, okay? And then we find a place to serve uh, and express the love of God to people around us. The second commandment. The first commandment is what? Love, our God with love our God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second commandment? Love, others like love your neighbor like yourself. Love others. Love God, love others. Those are the two commandments. And by loving others, that's action. We're taking action so we're telling people about Jesus. We're modeling uh, uh, a Christian walk in front of them. And we're serving people. That's the plan. All right? That's the plan for this week. That's the plan for the rest of this day is uh, we're going to walk with Jesus and uh, uh, be more like him every day. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for this time together. And Lord, we pray that you would protect us as we do battle and uh, help us to understand every day that it is a battle, that we're at war, and the, the flesh, our carnal nature, fights against what we want to do for the kingdom. Now we pray that you'd give us victory today and in the coming days. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.